I talked in one of my first videos about the marker pseudo element, uh, this marker selector that allows us to add some basic font and color styles to list numbers or list bullet points, uh, the list marker, that's called a marker on a list item. And we can do some basic styling on those and we can see that changes uh, as we remove them. But when a new feature like this comes out, uh, it often appears first in one browser and then it may slowly roll into other browsers. Uh, and there's some period of time where uh, a lot of our users are seeing different things potentially. Uh, some browsers are supporting the new feature, some browsers are not. Um, and even down the road, we might want to uh, make sure that we're supporting legacy browsers uh, that don't support a feature even though we're using it. And we can check what the fallback will be because when a browser doesn't understand a selector, it ignores that entire block. So we can comment out that block and we can see here what the fallback looks like. By default, those markers uh, inherit the style of uh, the list items themselves. We might use this without worrying too much about the fallback in some cases, but let's say we want to make this a little bit more complex. Um, since I'm showing here a list of features, all of the things we should be able to style on a marker, I'm going to put a check mark next to them. And we can see here uh, we've replaced the numbers with check marks. Um, sure, we may want to use an unordered list if we're doing something like this, but we won't worry about that for now. Now there's a little problem here where there's not enough space between the check mark and the word, and even adding spaces here inside of that marker content doesn't do it. Uh, so we're going to have to do something else, and at this point you can see padding isn't on the list of things we can style for a marker, so we have to add padding to the list item themselves in order to create some space there between the marker and the content of the list item. Now, if a browser doesn't understand this marker selector, it's going to ignore that, but it's still gonna have this extra padding here that we don't really need for our fallback. So what we would really like to do is have a way to say, if markers are supported, add this padding, and if they're not, don't add the padding. And that's where something like feature queries come into play. If you haven't run into feature queries before, they're similar to media queries, but they use this supports at rule, uh, and then they accept a property and value. Uh, and the browser is gonna check if it supports that property and value combination. So that might be something like display grid uh, would be a property value combination we could check. And then if the browser does support that, it will render whatever code we put inside. So let's just select the HTML element and give it a background of green when grids are supported. And you can see here uh, the background of our HTML, uh, the whole page turned green because this browser does support display grid. This browser does not support display uh, monkeys uh, because that's not a real thing. So uh, now we can see that code is not applied. We can also use it to check properties such as scroll margin of 1M. And you can see, again, this browser does support scroll margins. So uh, it's showing us that value. And if we said scroll margin grid, uh, that would not work because even though grid is a thing and scroll margin is a thing, that combination is not uh, a real um, property value combination that this browser supports or any browser supports. The problem with this is it requires a property and a value. And what we really want to check for here is a selector that hasn't been supported in the past, but Firefox 69 did add this feature. It's in the specifications and other browsers are working on it. And the way we check for a selector is we say at supports selector, and then we put any selector in here. And it can be a complex selector. It doesn't have to be just one thing. So we could say ULLI marker, um, and that's supported. Uh, we could say star marker, and that's supported. Um, we can put any selector inside of this selector function, um, and it will check to make sure that the browser supports that selector and then show whatever's inside of it. And what we'll do is we'll take this list item padding, put it inside of the supports, 
Now, if a browser doesn't support the marker selector, it will ignore all of that and we get the full fallback that we wanted. So feature queries are really great, but there's a little bit of a catch. And that is that a browser might support the marker selector or the marker pseudo element, and it might not support this syntax of feature query. It might not support the selector function. And when that happens, we're in a little bit of a funny position because browsers are going to ignore this block of code if they don't support marker, but also if they don't support selector feature queries. So we have to be careful and compare what browsers support which in order to decide when this is useful. So if we look at the can I use support tables for the at supports selector syntax and for the marker pseudo element, we can see here that there are some differences between the two and actually selector does have less support than the marker pseudo element. So we're gonna have to look into that uh, and decide whether this is actually something we want to use. Uh, the other support that we see here, there's one extra version of Firefox and I wouldn't worry too much about that, right? So people that are still using Firefox 68 uh, might not see that extra padding. One version of Firefox, that's not gonna be very many users, especially uh, the farther away we get from it. That might not be a big concern. The bigger concern here is going to be Safari and iOS Safari. And they have support, but they have limited support for the marker pseudo element. There's a few things they can't do. So I pulled up this same demo in Safari uh, just to see how it looks. And what I'm noticing here is that Safari does support the color and font settings, but it doesn't support this content. So actually the way that we've done this works pretty well, where Safari is ignoring that content and also ignoring this padding. Um, and so it does get a fallback that's sort of halfway between the two. Um, it's not getting the full fallback, but it is getting a reasonable fallback. This feature query here supports selector marker, uh, will specifically target browsers that not only support the marker selector, but hopefully also at this point, also support uh, providing contents to the marker and some of these other advanced features, uh, text combine upright direction and Unicode Biddy. So we can play around with that a little bit. Um, I've added this uh, basic support um, to two of these properties. Uh, so we can turn those to green uh, for every browser that supports the marker selector. And then after the H2, we'll add this X that implies we have uh, no support for the feature query on selectors. Um, and then if we do have support for the feature query on selectors, uh, we can change that content to a check mark. It did not change on Safari. Uh, so we can see here that uh, for a browser that does support selector marker, we can also style all the markers to be green. And we can see the difference in support between those two browsers. Just for this case at this moment, uh, it works pretty well to use the selector feature query to style marker elements uh, and provide different fallbacks depending on exactly what features are supported. That's gonna change depending on what features you're selecting. Another that we could look at uh, is the focus visible selector. It's only supported by Firefox with this browser prefix. So this is another one where it might be useful. Basically, if the selector feature query is better supported than the new feature that we're testing, um, that's going to be a good time to use it. Um, and in other cases, uh, you're gonna wanna play around. Uh, it might be a little bit hit and miss. And all of these charts might change by the time that you're watching this video. So go check them for yourself. And this is all happening sort of just in time in my mind. We're about to get this new set of selectors in CSS. They've been added to the specification and browsers are starting to implement them. And I really hope that browsers take some time to first implement the selector feature query 
before they implement all of these new selectors um, so that we're able to use one with the other. And that will be true for Firefox because Firefox already supports the selector feature query. Um, and I also checked with Chrome and they plan to implement. So I think browsers understand that there's some urgency around this. And I think we will see this roll out fairly quickly. I think feature queries are one of the coolest things in CSS because they allow us to play with new toys while still supporting old browsers. Um, and often in ways that don't have to be super complicated, much like using media queries to support small screens and large screens. So I hope you'll take advantage of this and uh, leave comments below if you find other good use cases for it.